So we'll start with a review of the laws of thermodynamics. So these are shown mostly in their mathematical form on the left hand side. The first uh, denoted by uh, this equation here is says that the energy in the universe is constant. Another way this is commonly stated is that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So what this means when we're looking at, um, at a reaction inside of a system, so if we uh, define a system as inside of the circle and everything outside of the circle is the surrounding, uh, what that tells us is that the change in energy happening within the system uh, can be accounted for by uh, the change in heat between the surroundings in the system and the work being done uh, between the surroundings in the system. And so the signs for these are as follows. So if heat enters from the surroundings and into the system, that is a positive Q. So that is the sign of that is positive. Whereas if work is being done by the system to the surroundings, like so, then the sign for that is also positive, okay? So that allows for this, where del U is the change in the internal energy of the system. And as I mentioned, Q is going to be heat, either be transferred to or from uh, the system or the surroundings, and W, which is work. The second thought of thermodynamics says that delta S, which is entropy, in the universe is always increasing. Now, entropy uh, can be, uh, has been defined uh, as several ways. One way to think about this is, is quote unquote as a disorder. And in fact, uh, I used to know someone who refused, uh, for instance, to clean his room on the basis that uh, it was a large uh, uh, center of disorder. And if he cleaned his room, uh, then that would have to have some corresponding uh, uh, disorder elsewhere in the universe, uh, such as an intergalactic battle. Now, that's not quite the idea behind uh, this equation, uh, but the idea uh, is closer to uh, how we think about energy conversions. And so, for instance, uh, if you look at a uh, biochemical cycle or a biogeochemical cycle, uh, for instance, um, light energy uh, creates um, or light energy is transformed into chemical energy by a process called photosynthesis. This forms sugars, which can then be broken down uh, by animals, for instance such as these cute squirrels or by us, to make carbon dioxide and water, which is then used again in photosynthesis. So these can cycle, these uh, nutrients can cycle around and around, but the energy is being converted from energy from the sun, which is the input energy, to output energy, which is heat, is dissipated heat. And so that's another way to think about entropy, is that energy is being converted to very usable forms to energy that can no longer be used to do work. So the final, um, the final equation is shown here, number three, uh, which says that entropy is zero only in a perfect crystal at zero K. Uh, in biochemical systems, of course, uh, so zero K is minus 273 degrees Celsius. We're not doing much work around there. So uh, most of what we'll look at is related to these two equations here. So let's look at number two specifically. So if we look at this more in depth, uh, we'll for, uh, another way to write this is that the change in the universe in entropy of the universe is equal to the change in entropy of the system plus the change in entropy of the surroundings, okay? And so basically if we're looking at any chemical process by the equation S universe, 
is greater than or zero, we can predict if this reaction is possible, if we know how it affects the entropy of the universe. However, uh, calculating the actual or observing the entropy in the entire universe is very difficult. So instead, we use this equation, where delta G is called Gibbs free energy. And that is equal to delta H minus T delta S, where H uh, is called enthalpy, and delta S, of course, as we already mentioned, is entropy. And so we can use this equation to predict if, uh, if a reaction is possible. So before we start working on uh, whether these reactions are possible or not, let's define some terms.